For Gaza's most vulnerable, access to electricity is literally a matter of life and death. And it's never been felt more than now. For the past few months, the Strip's only power plant has been running on fuel funded by Qatar and Turkey, but it runs out on Thursday. Gaza now has to buy fuel from the Palestinian Authority, which it says it can't afford. We can't buy fuel to operate the generating plant to produce the needed amount of electricity. The reason is that the Palestinian Ministry of Finance is applying taxes on fuel prices, so prices are more than two and a half times higher than those supplied by Qatar and Turkey. The Gaza Strip has suffered from an electricity crisis for more than 10 years, made worse by Israel's blockade that limits fuel imports. Its 2 million residents need around 600 megawatts of electricity every day, but the power plant, assisted by Egyptian and Israeli supplies, can't even provide half of that. If supplies stop, many stand to lose their livelihoods. Of course, our work will be difficult. We won't be able to deliver our service to our customers. We are using big machines in our maintenance work here, and they consume a huge amount of electricity. Recently, Gaza suffered its worst electricity shortage in years, where homes had power for only around three hours a day. It led to the first mass protests inside the besieged enclave in nearly a decade. Residents now receive electricity eight hours at a time, but authorities warn of worse days ahead. All vital health departments will be affected by this crisis, like emergency departments, intensive care units, operating theatres, baby incubators, blood banks, labs and childbirth units. We are talking about a real catastrophe. The Palestinian Authority says it has no choice but to charge the taxes because it has its own financial worries. It's been in talks with Gaza's ruling Hamas party for months to try and end the crisis. But hopes for a solution have less current than the Strip's power grids. Denise Savoya, TRT World.